So the app's really coming together. We've got the homepage displaying information. It's synchronized with where the map has zoomed in. So we can zoom in here and it just shows us the homes from that area. But the left and the right aren't really tied together at all. We want to, when you highlight the home here, hover it, highlight that over here on the map. Now, because these are two separate components, we need to share state above um, between them both so we can lift it up above to the parent. And the parent in this case is the page itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the page and that's the home page, so the index. We need this use state now. So see, we're using all the imports now. We're, we're making progress. We're getting close to, to finishing this app and deploying it out. So use state. So what state are we going to store? We're going to store just the ID of the house that's being hovered over. So the ID is enough to let us know which house is being should be highlighted. So let's go back here to the code and we'll say we're going to store this as highlighted ID and set highlighted ID. And that is equal to use state. And it's going to start out as null because nothing's highlighted. Let's give it some type info. So it's going to be either a string or null, depending if it's highlighted or not. So we've got the value and the setter. So the setter is going to be passed over here to this house list because it's going to tell us which one is being highlighted. So let's go do that first. So we copy this setter function pass it to the house list as a prop like this. It's freaking out. We got to go over to the house list. So SRC components house list, and we need to tell it, Hey, you're going to receive a set highlighted ID function. So this function is going to receive the ID, which should either be a string or null. And you don't have to return anything. Uh, well, nothing's being returned from this function. Just like this, we need to receive that as a variable. So the types are good. We have the variable. So now when are we going to um, basically set it and unset it? So we're going to do that at this high level div, the one that says flex and flex wrap, just to enter. And we're going to add two additional props. So the first is on mouse enter. So when the mouse first scrolls into that div or over top of it. So when this is the case, we are going to call set highlighted ID, passing in the house ID like this. So that will set the value. And how do we unset it? We unset it when on mouse leave. So when the user moves their mouse away from this div, we're going to call set highlighted ID, passing in null to unset it. And that's all we need to do in the house list over here. So now, as we move our mouse over each one, it should be setting and unsetting the state. But we need to visually show that over here on the right side. So to do that, we're going to go back to the home page, so the index. And remember, there's two parts to set state. There's the setter, and then there's the value itself. So we're going to now pass the value into the map. So we're going to pass highlighted ID. Here's your value. So again, TypeScript's freaking out. We have to go into the map and update its interface for the props it's going to receive. So you're now going to receive a highlighted ID. What type of data is this going to be? It's either going to be a string or null. Those are the two options whether we're highlighted, we're highlighting a house or not. So now we have to receive the prop as a variable. And now we can come down and just make a couple tweaks to display this thing correctly. The first tweak we're going to do. So first of all, we're talking about the markers, the one that represents each of these houses here. First thing we're going to do is add a class to the marker. So we're going to say class name. And it's not going to be a string. It's going to be um, basically we're going to do some logic in here. So some JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to say is the highlighted ID equal to 
the house that we're currently mapping over. If that's the case, I want to add a class called marker active. Otherwise, no class is needed. So what is this marker active class? It's one of the only non tailwind classes I'm using. It's inside of styles index. And literally all it does is set the Z index to one rather than zero or the default. And the reason is if we are say super, oops, super zoomed out and they're, they're all like covering each other. I basically want to bring it to the forefront, the one that's being hovered. Next thing I want to do back on the map is this image that's being displayed. I want to convert this into some logic so we can display one image versus another, depending if the home is highlighted or not. So same sort of logic. We're going to say if the highlighted ID is equal to the house ID, if that's the case, I want to actually show a different home. So slash home color dot SVG. Otherwise we'll stick with the old solid. So if you're highlighting, you get a colored home. Every other home is a solid. So let's come back and just see if it's working. So there we go. That's that home, this home, that home. Oh man, I keep clicking on that thing. Come out. You can see that it pops to the forefront, even though it's not, that's the Z index change. So just zoom in again. And that's that pretty short video. I wanted to keep this one small, but it adds some pretty good functionality just so that you know which one is being um, highlighted. Now you could, if you wanted to on your own, try to take this a step further and tie. we've tied the left to the right. You could try to tie the right to the left. So when you hover the marker, you could highlight the home over here on the left. And if it's a big list, you could even try to scroll it to the right position. I'm going to leave that to you. Um, that's not something we're building here, but that would be pretty cool functionality to add. So that's it for this video. We're highlighting the house that's being hovered. See you on the next one where, unless I'm wrong, let me just check right now. We are adding in the search to the form. So the user can use the same sort of search that we have in the add house form where they can type in, oop, I'm not authenticated. Anyways, where you can type in a place and then the map will bring you to that location. Cool. See you there.